How does the autofocus on the Sony A9 compare to that on the Sony A7R 3 Stay tuned to find out. What is good YouTube? It's That One Camera Guy back at again with another video for you. Today I'm going to be comparing the A9's autofocus with that of the A7R 3 but I'm going to primarily illustrate and discuss my experience having used the A7R 3 in a variety of environments, especially in high ISO and low light conditions. What we're going to try and figure out is, is there a definite difference between the A7R3's autofocus and that of the A9? Right now, there's a lot of comparisons, and I've, I've even said it too, where I felt that the A9's autofocus was similar to that on the A7R3. But after testing it over the past week and shooting in a handful of environments, I've realized that the A9 still leads the pack in some ways, and we'll cover that in this video. The first thing I did with the A7R 3 to really challenge it in low light environment was shoot a Christmas parade that was being held down Main Street. Now at this parade there was not a whole lot of lighting, lighting available. There was some spot lighting that kind of gave some backlighting challenges when I was shooting. But overall there were some really dark patches of areas as people were going down the street during the parade that made it really difficult for something like the A7R 3 to focus on. So I shot with the 7200G Master which sort of forced myself to be shooting at ISO is above 6400 ISO, as you can see in the examples. There was some issues when I was trying to focus with the backlighting behind it with the spotlight, but for the most part, the camera was pretty smart to ignore it and lock onto its subjects. The times it did have trouble were for obvious reasons when there just wasn't enough contrast on the subject that I was trying to take a photo of. As soon as I was able to acquire some form of contrast on there, even there was very little light available, the camera was able to lock focus on its subject. Again, no light, you know, the camera is going to struggle. I think that's expected, but it still worked and you could still find focus when you needed it to. So as far as my experience shooting low light in that kind of condition, which was really challenging, I guess the way to put it would be sort of like give it a thumbs up in terms of its performance, but I wouldn't give it two thumbs up, but just good enough to get the job done. All right, the next thing I went and shot was a winter concert and that was held in our auditorium at the high school and it's really low light. There is some lighting there, but it's still some low light conditions, especially in some areas. I used the A7R 3 with the Sigma 50 to 100 with the Sigma MC11 adapter. I found the focusing to perform very, very good. Didn't have any major issues, shot at F1.8. And um, yeah, the camera did exactly what I expected to do. Focus on its subjects, locked on, took photos, etc., etc., etc was very, very happy with the results. So if you're shooting a concert type environment, I even switched over to the 7200G Master. And again, performance was very good, especially with that setup because of the fact that it's native to the actual body. So no issues there, low light performance, A9, very good. And I would rate it compared to the A9, very similar in terms of its performance. Like you wouldn't necessarily need the A9 um, for those types of situations that I was shooting in. Now we get into some very interesting scenarios shooting high ISO environments, and I mean 25,600 ISO. I was shooting with the Sony 100 to 400 G Master, which I'm evaluating, and there'll be a video on that later on. But because I was shooting with it, I was shooting at f5.6 at 25,600 ISO. I was using the A9 combination while shooting that, and um, it worked. The combination worked. The A7R 3 was still able to focus on the subjects even though it was very dark and had a 1 500th of a second shutter speed, still locked on to its subjects. But here's what I, I noticed. When you're pressing down on the shutter button, it's a bit heavier uh, in, in terms of its ability to fire off. So uh, it's more like acceleration, right? If we're going from 0 to 60, I would say that the A7R 3 takes about a, it felt like a second in order to get to 0 to 60. But then when I went ahead and fired off with the A9, it was instant. The acceleration on the A9 just it just it just went off. So there wasn't any lag with the A9. I was shooting at the same conditions, 25,600, 1 500th of a second, f5.6, with the 100 to 400 G Master, and I would fire, there would not be any hesitation at all. So it would just, boom, fires off, no worries. A7R3 kind of lagged a little bit. Um, was it enough to kind of deter you from shooting? Absolutely not, but it really showed me that there is a significant difference in the performance. The A9 definitely is night and day in this situation because just that little bit of lag could be the difference from you from getting the actual photo you want 
the best photo of the instance versus the a7r3 which would miss that moment i'm not saying the a7r3 can't pull it off if you're good at timing and waiting and, and knowing the game and have experience a7r3 will work just fine but if you're kind of at that point where you need that absolute peak performance the a9 has the advantage and I would weigh that advantage pretty highly in this, in this situation. All right, so another scenario where I found some very interesting results, and I don't know if this has been answered yet, maybe it has, but I went ahead and shot again soccer again the next day during the daytime. I was using a 2X teleconverter with the 100 to 400 G Master, which effectively set the, the aperture to about F5, uh, F11 on the lens. And so I was shooting with the A7R3 initially with that combination and it did struggle. It struggled to focus. It wasn't quick. It back focused a little bit, uh, meaning it was kind of pulsating its focus. I didn't have a lot of confidence using the 2X teleconverter with the 100 to 400 G Master with the A7R3. It would get the. It would work, but it wasn't confidence building. I wasn't. I didn't feel that sense of like this. These two items together work very well. Did not feel that at all without combination. And then here's where things got interesting. Put the A9, 2X teleconverter, 100-400, it worked. There was, I didn't feel any major lag or anything. It fired and it fired and it fired and it tracked its subject. This is where I was seeing that big giant difference between the A7R3 and the A9. And I think it's a very interesting point because there's folks who shoot wildlife, there's folks who need that reach. And they're wondering, hey, is the A7R3 going to work well or is the A9 going to work well? And I can I can say from using it, and this was during daytime, bright lighting, that if you need the absolute 2x teleconverter with the 100-400, do not get the A7R3. I don't recommend it. Okay, I, I personally would not recommend it if you need that reach. The autofocusing that goes along with it, it's not very reliable. The A9, on the other hand, with the 2x teleconverter with the 100-400, it works very good, okay? As expected, it feels like it's paired extremely well with the A9 system, and it just fires and fires and fires, and there's, again, it doesn't feel like there's any hesitation. A9, uh, the A7R3, I felt the hesitation, and it just kind of focused weird, couldn't trust it 100%. So, there you go. That sort of answers, hopefully, some folks who are saying, hey, A7R3 is autofocus, same as A9. It is not. The A9 has the advantage in low light. It has the advantage in terms of just autofocusing speed and performance. I did even shoot some basketball, low light again, and the A9 has the upper hand once again. Not enough that I would say the A7R3 couldn't perform. It absolutely will perform, but the A9 will always have that advantage. So, folks, there you have it. Conclusion, really quick. If you shoot at the highest peak performance of sports, this is pretty obvious, stick with the A9. Add the A7R3 as a secondary camera if you need the high megapixel options available for you. There's a lot of benefits with the A7R3 with the Super 35 mode and being able to shoot with that. I absolutely still love it and I would still highly recommend the A7R3 if you can't budget for an A9 if you're going to do sports. But A9 definitely wins out there. So there you have it. If you need a 2XL converter and you do 100-400, the A9 will be superior. A7R3, it's going to need some tweaking. It's You're going to need to be patient with it. But... There you have it. Folks, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you have to say or your personal experience using this combination in a variety of other scenarios. I don't shoot wildlife, but would like to know what your results have been with that combination. That's going to do it for me. Like, subscribe, and check out my other content. And with that said, I'm your host, That One Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.